Welcome back to the Time Capsule video series. I'm Marshall Brain, and as I mentioned in part one, this series of Time Capsule videos is aimed at my great-great-great-grandchildren who are living perhaps 200 years from now. Here in part six, what I'd like to do is show you 10 big questions about the future that we have in 2010. Since 200 years have now passed, you can look back at these questions with perfect hindsight and see how these things, which we're really worried about in 2010, actually turned out. Question 1. Did we wreck the planet with global warming or not? Right now, in 2010, there is huge concern that all the carbon dioxide mankind is pumping into the atmosphere is going to have catastrophic effects on our planet. Scientists see two possibilities. The first is that the CO2 heats things up so much that Greenland melts, Antarctica melts, and the oceans rise 10, 20, 30 feet or more and flood out coastal areas. We lose cities like New York, Los Angeles, as well as most of Florida. The other possibility is that warming causes the Gulf Stream to shut down and we enter a new ice age, which would probably be even worse. In 2010, we talk about trying to cut back on fossil fuels and CO2 emissions, but we make very little progress. CO2 emissions grew 35% in the last 10 years. So how did this whole global warming thing work out? How high did sea levels rise since 2010? Or did an ice age start? Do you look at those of us living back in 2010 as being idiots for not taking action sooner? Question 2. How many species go extinct? It looks like in 2010 we're standing on the brink of a mass extinction. Lots of big species like elephants, tigers, rhinos, manatees, and so on are in peril. There are only about 500,000 African elephants left in the wild. There are only about 20,000 lions and rhinoceroses left in the wild. Bluefin tuna could be extinct in 10 years from overfishing along with many shark species. There is huge concern about ocean acidification and its effect on coral reefs and smaller species. We're cutting down the rainforests at a fierce rate and many species could become extinct there as well. With 200 years of hindsight, did human beings get their act together, solve the problems and prevent a mass extinction event? Or did we blow it? Did we save the rainforests and the oceans or did we lose thousands of species? A related question. Did humans solve the problem of plastics in the ocean and the Pacific garbage patch or did the problem just keep growing? We're aware of the problem in 2010, but there's no movement whatsoever on a solution. Question 3. How many human beings are there? There's a lot of concern in 2010 about the size of the human population. When I was a kid in 1975, the world population was 4 billion people. In 2010, it's 6.8 billion. We know that all these humans are starting to stress food supplies and water supplies, overfish the ocean, and so on. Did the population just keep growing, or was there a catastrophic famine or pandemic event that cut the population back, or did humans enact policies to control population? Question 4. Do terrorists get access to nuclear weapons and cause mass destruction? There's been a lot of concern about terrorists since 9-11-2001, which was a gigantic event in America. Right now, only a few countries have nuclear weapons, but North Korea has been testing weapons and Iran is on the brink of testing its first. Did terrorists get hold of nuclear weapons and blow up a large city? Did they ever mount another serious attack like 9-11? Or did terrorists fade away? Question 5. Is there a big economic catastrophe because of oil? In 2010, there are many dire predictions about the world running out of oil. That's because the world is totally dependent on oil to run its cars, trucks, trains, and airplanes right now. It's difficult, if not impossible, to imagine a world without oil in 2010. Did we ever run out? If so, did it create an economic catastrophe? Or did we convert over to things like electric cars and biofuels in time? There are many other elements that are starting to look just as scarce, 
Things like gold and iron production look like they've peaked in 2010 or will peak in the near future. We talk about peak gold and peak platinum. How did that work out? Question six, what happens with outer space? In 2010, the United States has a real problem with space. Since the 1960s, when we landed on the moon, we've been the dominant space nation. But we're ending the space shuttle program in 2010, and we've just canceled the new moon program. We will have no way to get into Earth orbit in 2011, and we'll be hitching rides on Russian rockets. To people who love space, you can't imagine how disappointing this is, especially since we had such a promising start. The U.S. could have started a moon base in the 1970s, and we could easily be on Mars by now, but we totally lost our momentum. So what happens? Do humans start living in space and on other planets? Does the United States ever get its momentum back? Or do other nations like China take over? We watch movies like Star Wars and Star Trek in 2010, and we assume humans will soon be traveling to other stars. Does that ever happen? And what about SETI? Do we discover intelligent life elsewhere in the universe? In 2010, SETI has discovered absolutely nothing. Question 7. Does the United States economy implode or survive? In 2010, there are several things that, we are told, could bankrupt the country. The deficit is at about $12 trillion right now and has been growing rapidly in recent years. Social Security and Medicare are set to run out of money in a decade or two. Healthcare costs in the U.S. are rising rapidly and we seem to be unable to control them. The dollar has been the dominant international currency for decades, but it appears that that dominance may be about to end. Some people predict hyperinflation. Some predict a total collapse of the American currency. Some say it'll all work itself out. What actually happened? Question 8. Did the United States peak in the 20th century, or do we come back? If you look at questions number 6 and 7, there's a more general question we could ask. The United States has been the world's dominant superpower since World War II. The U.S. currently has the world's highest GDP, the world's largest and most aggressive military, the world's dominant currency, and so on. Did that continue, or is the United States peaking right now and scheduled for a big fall from its dominant position? Or does the United States even matter to you? Did people finally decide to join together as a single species with common worldwide goals and essentially become one planet-wide body free of wars, terrorism, nationalism, and so on? That seems impossible in 2010, but who knows? Question 9. What happens with religion? In 2010, religion is a huge deal in the United States. About 75% of the population in the U.S. claims to be Christian. More than half of the people in the United States think the Bible is literally true. The majority of U.S. citizens do not believe in evolution and instead believe in the Bible's account of creation. There are over 2 billion Christians on the planet and more than 1 billion Muslims, and they're growing fast. So how did this turn out? Did the world become more religious, stay about the same, or did the world eventually become rational and abandon religion? And question 10. Do humanoid robots, artificial intelligence, self-driving cars, and so on ever become a reality? Right now, there are basically zero robots found in American homes and businesses. There is a little robot called Roomba that will sweep your floor by randomly running into things, but that's about it. There are zero robots in any of our retail stores or restaurants. There are zero robots in our homes. There are zero robots on the streets. All cars and trucks are driven manually by people. But people expect robots to take off any day now as computers become more and more powerful. It's easy to imagine humanoid robots doing mundane tasks like cooking and cleaning. We expect robot cars and trucks to take over the driving and make our roads much safer. We expect robots to take over retail and construction jobs and so on. How did that actually work out? And what about the singularity? There are many people in 2010 who predict that technology will advance until it becomes conscious, self-aware, and superhuman. 
then it will explode in capabilities to the point where the outcome is totally unpredictable. What happened with that? In other words, do you live in a utopia or in a hell on earth caused by robots? Have you discarded your human bodies? Are your lives completely unimaginable to people living in 2010? Or are they strangely similar? You, with 200 years of hindsight, know the answers to all 10 of these questions. To us, in 2010, these are all mysteries and we await the outcome. I hope it went well. In part 7, we'll take a tour of a library. In 2010, the Brain family visits the library every week or two.